Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We pray that today's message will encourage you and inspire you and be a blessing to you and meet your needs, especially in your soul. Amen. I want to talk to you today about being encouraged. As I was praying, the Lord gave me this message because I see so much discouragement in the world today. But that's a given. The world has nothing to be happy about because they don't have Christ. Amen? <laughs> but I also know that there's a lot of discouragement in the body of Christ. And there's reasons for that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today and how we can get out of that slump. How we can get from being discouraged to being encouraged. Amen? Amen. And what are some of the reasons behind being so discouraged these days? First of all, we see that the world really has gone mad. <laughs> Literally, it's gone mad. I mean, people are so filled with hate. If you don't agree with them, <clears throat> you know, they, they hate you. There's haters out there. The world is on fire. And the Bible says that in the last days, when those plagues start to come from the Most High, the world will be on fire. Much of it will be destroyed by fire. But it's already starting. Amen? Not necessarily a literal fire, but it's a fire of hatred. And bitterness. And it's nothing that shouldn't surprise us, but yet it does to some people because they're not maybe uh, caught up in the prophecy. They not have studied the Bible enough to know that these things must come, Jesus said, upon the earth before I return. And, you know, we, we, we hear that and we get it in our mind, but sometimes it doesn't sink down into our spirit, man, where it needs to be. And we need to really <clears throat> think about it, meditate on it, and see what, exactly what he's talking about. When you line up what's happening in the world today compared to what it says would happen in the last days, it's right on point. It's right on target. So we should not be caught by surprise, although it is a little scary, especially if you're not dug into the Lord. It's scary. And that's why so many people are trying to numb themselves, drugs, alcohol, lust, whatever the case might be, <clears throat> whatever works for them, because they're trying to escape reality, mainly because they can't handle reality. Because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you if you're in Christ. Amen. Doesn't mean you have to like what's going on. Doesn't mean that you agree what's going on. Just means you understand what's going on. And you know how serious it is. And you know how the only way you're going to overcome it is to be really grounded and rooted in your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The world... Is not only set on fire with, 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 with people that hate God. The Bible talks about in the last days to be God-haters. Mm -hmm. They'll rather worship Satan and devils, the Bible says, than the Creator who created them. Because they got so bitter. They don't want anybody to tell them how to live. They don't want anybody telling them how to do anything. And they get rebellious. And we see that's nothing new either. That's been all through... Every generation since Adam and Eve, we realize that there's been a lot of bitterness and hatred and violence. The Bible says in the last days that violence, one of the signs of the last days, that violence will cover the face of the earth, as in the days of Noah. Well, if that ain't happening now, I don't know when it will. It's happening now. Violence, not only violence in an in a, in a, in a ungodly world, but we see violence in, a, in, in the United States that was born more or less as a Christian nation with a constitution, people that loved and feared the Almighty. But you don't see that a whole lot today. You see the, the country's divided right down the middle. God lovers and God haters. Good moral people and people that just cut loose like a goose. They don't care where everything goes. Anything goes. Same-sex marriage, abortions, all those things. Oh, they'd love to shut this preacher up. They would hate when you speak like that. They hate it because why? It goes against what they're doing. 
It goes against what they want to do because the, the Bible says the devil is their father. That's why they follow the devil. They follow his lead. And that's why the Bible also says that the devil, the prince of the air, has blinded the minds of those that don't know Jesus Christ. They're blinded. The blind lead the blind. They both fall in the ditch. And that's a given. Now that's the world. We understand that. I can't camp out too long anywhere, but you'll get enough about everything today. But the truth of the matter is, it's also happening in so-called churches today. There's a lot of liberal churches, a lot of ungodly churches. Just because we hang a sign out front and put a cross on a steeple, maybe a cross, and put it up on a building, don't make it a church. Jesus Christ makes it a church. Amen. It's got to be all built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, the rock. All other ground is sinking sand, the Bible says. Religion don't cut it. Okay, it's got to be salvation from the heart. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So we see that there's a lot of things going on in the world that are plaguing the world, and it seems like it's being ripped apart, coming on glued from the seams. And again, we shouldn't be surprised because it's been prophesied. These things must happen before the end comes. But I'm telling you, we're that close to the end. Say, this doesn't sound real encouraging. Yeah, hold on. It'll get a little more encouraging. Right now, we got to cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen? Amen. Because so, so many preachers, too many Christians, they bury their head in the sand. Amen. If they face, can't face reality. They cannot face the total truth of this Bible, the Word of God. And they just want to be able to Blab it and grab it, see it and be it, claim it and game it. You know, all these kind of, I'm never sick. You know, that's not, that's contrary to the word of God. That's not faith, that's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe in healing. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in deliverances. I believe in speaking in us. I believe everything the Bible says. But sometimes man carries it to a whole other level. Amen. To please people. Because it's, Bible says they, like Isaiah, they said, the bad people said in his generation, and these were God people. You preach on to us smooth things. Not that hard stuff. We don't care if it is true. We don't want to hear you preach. You prophesy better than that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In other words, you better tickle our ears and tell us we're going to heaven even if we're going to hell. Well, that's a lie. Amen. If you're looking for a church like that, you picked the wrong one. <laughs> you're looking for a preacher like that you picked the wrong one amen that's why we don't have a thousand people <laughs> hello because they either get saved and get right or they get out because you can't handle this kind of stuff you can't handle the fire you can't handle the truth if you're come on slipping and dipping and moving and grooving and sliding and all those things and you know you're committing to, hey can I tell it like it is if you're committing adultery here fornication there homosexuality here you got hatred in your heart here this is the last thing you want to hear amen. thank God for one amen this is the last thing you want to hear but it's what we need to hear why because our souls depend on it our salvation depends on it. our future uh, eternity depends on Amen. what we believe. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. I was thinking the other day, I was just meditating on the Lord and reading some scripture, and I was thinking how it was in the days of Noah. And I said, yeah, Lord, and as I'm reading that chapter, you know, and talking about it, and how the ark and the flood and all these things, and how he was preaching and all for 120 years, I said, man, them people had some hardened hearts preaching 120 years. And they still didn't get saved. And the Bible called him a righteous preacher. He preached it right. It was powerful. But nobody wanted to hear it. And they, we know that they were all lost in the flood. All those souls were lost except for eight souls, Noah and his family. But one of the things that stuck out to me was, just like it is today, and I mean that this way, one of the main things that send them people to their, to their grave and to hell was that they did not believe. Hello. They didn't believe. Now we know that what it says in the Bible, how they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving a marriage, and hey, the lid was off, everything went, doesn't matter, man, anything goes. But it was mainly, just like it is today, 
their unbelief. You see, because when you believe, hear me now, when you truly believe the truth, the word of God, things change. Yes. You change. Yes. You don't talk the same, act the same, walk the same, con the same. You know, enough, everything changes because yes. you get a new heart. Yes. But see, first, the first step is to believe. Yes. So they went to their watery graves because they refused to believe the preaching of a righteous man. Can I get a witness? Amen. And it's the same thing today. They do not believe. Many will not believe this word of God. They choose. And you know what? It's a choice. Listen, you put 20 people here. They all have a free will. Some will believe. Some won't. God gives us a free will. But we are responsible and there are circumstances and conditions amen for whether we believe or not we pay for what we believe or don't believe amen, amen. hallelujah Ooh, my god my god thank you jesus i love you lord amen it's time for the true church now y'all I, I say that a lot because there's a false church and there's a true church the true church is born again believers amen. the true church is the true body of Christ. Amen. 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 It's not the it's not the wolf's and sheep's clothing. It's not the the, the the tares. All right. It's not the goats. It's true believers. Amen. Amen. The true believers of the church of the body of Christ. It is really time for us as true believers to wise up. Amen. I said it's time to wise up. Amen. That we might be able to. Wake up. Even the Bible says, wake up, thou sleeping slumber. Wake up before it's too late. Talking to the body. Wake up. So that we can then rise up. Amen. We need to wake up, wise up, so that we can rise up for Jesus Christ. Doesn't the Bible say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? If you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb through the blood of Jesus Christ, you've got something to say. Amen. To a lost world. Buried in darkness. You've got something to share. It should be your testimony. Like we heard today. What God, where God brought me from. I, I was lost. And now I'm found. I was blind. But now I can see. Amen. I was a mess. I was a wreck. I was led by the nose by Satan. Ball and chain. But now I've been set free. By the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We've got something to say. That's why he said, let the redeemed. You've been redeemed. You've been bought with a price. Even the blood of Jesus Christ. That makes you not only worth something. Because the devil tells us how 